That is what it's all about, folks. That's why we're doing this today. One more time, please, for Mandy Eagler. Mandy, thank you so, so much for sharing that with us today. I can't imagine how hard that was. I also just want to take a minute to acknowledge how wonderful she's been throughout this entire process. Mandy has been there for me for everything that I've needed since she came on board for Stamp Out Stigma. I know that it's really important to her. So thank you so much personally for me, Mandy. Thank you. Our last speaker today, if you don't know him around campus, you should get to know him. In addition to being our Disability Services Coordinator and our Campus Counselor, he is also in charge of the entire um, Wellness Month here at Penn State Shenango. He's got events going on throughout the month of October to promote mental health and wellness, general wellness. He's an amazing counselor. I've gone to see him a couple times myself when I was a student here. Please can I get a warm welcome for Mr. Tony Paglia. So I'm in the unenviable position of uh, following Mandy's uh, <laughs> courageous talk. Uh, Mandy, thank you. Um, I, I honor everything you said there. Thank you for being real with this group of folks. Uh, Susan, thank you for being here. Susan and our colleagues from community counseling, that's where I kind of cut my teeth on mental health. And uh, we go way back, so I'm glad you're part of this. Thank you for talking about mental health first aid. And I hope that you folks will give some serious consideration to taking one of those trainings at some point. Jack. You've been working on this for months. Um, this event is the result of months of Jack's passionate dedication. I want to thank him for that. And Alex, thank you for coming back and bringing things full circle with last year. So, in a couple of minutes I have up here, I'd like to kind of do what Mandy, take a jump off of what Mandy was saying, is that not make this just about today, this conversation. Let's take the conversation further. What can we do? Um, you know, over the next few weeks, I'd like you to think about some things that are going on here at the campus. Obviously, you can wear one of these green bracelets that are up here to stamp out stigma bracelet. I encourage you to come up and pick one up. And Jack, I think you're probably going to talk about the, the sign the pledge thing too, but that's something you can do as well. Um, but in addition to that, we've got a variety of mental health related events, as Jack mentioned, coming up at Shenango. And I want to just give you a little information on each of those and I encourage you to participate in one or more of them as you feel led. So first of all, you're invited to uh, attend a film screening next Wednesday at noon in Sharon Hall 108, this room over here in the corner. The film, which is, has a tongue-in-cheek title, Call Me Crazy. It's a collection of short stories, each with an individual that experiences a different mental health issue and the impact that it has on their life and the life is, lives of the people are in their, uh, and they're around them and their friends and family. It's a depression, bipolar disorder, schizophrenia, and post-traumatic stress disorder. Call Me Crazy takes these diagnoses and puts human faces on them in the hopes of reducing stigma and building understanding. I find the cast pretty impressive, and I want to take a minute to mention some of the people involved in this film. Um, they include Oscar winners Jennifer Hudson, Octavia Spencer, and Melissa Leo, as well as Brittany Snow, that some of you may know from Pitch Perfect, Sarah Hyland from Modern Family, um, some folks who made uh, their careers in the 80s, like Leah Thompson and Melanie Griffith, and a whole bunch of others. Needless to say, the acting is fantastic. Each short film has a different director that include actresses Laura Dern, Bonnie Hunt, and Ashley Chud. And the executive producer is Jennifer Aniston. And basically, some people with some serious Hollywood clout came together to make this film and to raise awareness uh, and understanding about mental health. There's going to be free food. I hope you'll take some time out next Wednesday between 12 and 2. Join us in room 108, uh, have some lunch, and watch the film. We'll discuss it, and hopefully we'll begin to continue this conversation. Next, you are invited to participate in Dia de los Muertos, the Mexican Day of the Dead. This is our fourth year of doing this at Penn State Shenango, and it's become a bit of a tradition. If you're not familiar with it, in parts of Mexico, uh, in parts of Mexico toward the end of October and early November, there are several days of celebration to honor the dead. In the streets, people in festive clothes parade, dance, and make a lot of noise. In homes, they decorate with flowers, mementos, and photos of loved ones who passed away. And they prepare the favorite foods of the departed. The purpose of the holiday is to honor the grieving process and the idea that when we lose someone that we love, something changes forever. That their memory and 
even the pain that comes with remembering, is not something to suppress, but to honor and to celebrate. To quote Charlie Brown from the cartoon Peanuts, this is what I like to call good grief. To that end, starting next Monday, there will be a community memorial wall across from Sharon Hall 105. You are invited to honor those loved ones that you've lost by posting words or photographs in their memory. The wall will be up for two weeks, and all of this will culminate in our Dia de los Muertos celebration on Monday, November 2nd, at noon, right here in the Great Hall. We will have free Mexican food and candy, face painting, and live mariachi music. This is a lot of fun, but it's also in the service of healthy expression of emotions, which ultimately is beneficial to our mental health. I hope you will consider participating in this event. Other things. We offer a free meditation class the first Friday of every month from 11.30 to 12.15, upstairs in Sharon Hall 215. Meditation is a great method of developing clarity of thought, concentration, and relaxation. It's a great way to reduce stress. Vince Lisi, one of our professors, is the teacher, and you're welcome to stop by and check it out. Also coming up, something I feel really strongly about, is our Movember, or No Shave November. We're focusing on men's health awareness during the month of November. Guys, I want to talk to you for a minute. We live in a culture where men are expected to be macho and never cry, never get sick, never feel pain, and never get depressed. You know as well as I do that that simply isn't true. One of the best things that you can do for your long-term health is to have the courage to dismantle the unrealistic expectation within yourself to take care of yourself, to go see the doctor, to talk to the counselor. In addition to uh, some of the informational things we've been putting around, we're encouraging the guys to grow out their facial hair in November, uh, kind of a playoff beard kind of a thing. We're going to be having some contests and some prizes and some other fun on November 18th to wrap it all up, so please stay tuned for that. Finally, you're invited in to come and talk to me. If you're sitting here today and you're thinking about your own story in the wake of what Mandy shared here today, and if you think it might be helpful to have someone to talk to, please know that you have me as a free resource here, right here on campus. You've been hearing the statistic all morning or afternoon here that one in four of us will struggle with mental health symptoms in a given year. That's extremely common. Do you know how often people get the flu during cold and flu season each year? According to the CDC, it's anywhere between one in five and one in 20. But mental health is way more common than something, something we would consider as common as the flu. It's our hope that programs like Stand Out Stigma will reinforce the idea that taking care of your emotional health is an important part of your personal wellness. That talking to a counselor about stressors or emotional issues is as important to your health as seeing a doctor about an infection or a broken bone. So you're invited. My office is on the second floor of Sharon Hall in room 207. Services are confidential, respectful, non-judgmental. I would be honored to be someone that you would share any of this with and to know that it would be treated with the utmost of respect. No issue is too big or too small. I'm here to serve you in hopes that having this resource on campus will help you meet your goals academically, professionally, and personally. Thank you for listening. Excited. I still have about five minutes here, so I'm going to take the opportunity just to acknowledge a few people who helped bring this event to fruition today. I want to thank all of my co-presenters, Susan Posnar, Tony Paglia, Mandy Eagler. I want to thank Alex Morosi for coming back again this year. I want to acknowledge Fern Torok. She's sitting right over there. She spoke at Stamp Out Stigma on campus last year, and she's the one who um, introduced me to this initiative in the first place. I want to thank my best friend and personal assistant, Michelle Truax. She's sitting up here up front with us today for, um, for support. I want to say thanks to Jamie Clark in Student Affairs. She's at home with her new baby boy right now, but she's been instrumental in putting all this together. I want to say thank you to Liz Izenas. She's our PR person. She's been helping me spread the word as well. I want to thank all the professors in the HDFS program who allowed me to come and speak to their classes to promote this event. And most of all, I want to thank each and every one of you for being here today. I want you to know that you are witnessing a dream come true for me to see all of you here today to hear this message and to support this initiative. 
I want to thank you from the bottom of my heart. That concludes the presentation. Please come up front, get your green bracelet, sign the pledge to stamp out stigma, to talk about it openly. Please go see Susan at the community counseling table to get information about mental health first aid and their services. <clears throat> Remember, the Stamp Out Stigma campaign challenges each of us to transform the dialogue on mental health and addiction from a whisper to a conversation. Let's begin that conversation today. Thank you. Thank you.